Right. Hey, what, hey, listen, we're talking to Tiffany Hurst right here, and you are so, like, you're into this. You're all, like a horse person. You're like almost a cowgirl. Trying to be. Yeah. Okay, so. Mike got his first touch on his horse. Um, it's custom to take their tags off, and we just wanted to give you the tag. Well, for, hey! Um, it's very special to a lot of trainers. Well, I appreciate that. I thought it'd be cool souvenir. How about that? I go right on the wall. Thing, baby. Studio wall. That's right. Thank you, Tiffany. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Brightville Farm today, along with the horse whisperer <laughs> himself, Mike Hurst. Now, Mike, we're down here for a very special reason today. And the reason being, come on, watch, let's just walk through. I just don't very often I get to go to the country. Um, with the Extreme Mustang Mako. Yeah, yep, that's right. Now, the cool thing about Mustangs, and I'm learning about stuff all the time, the, the cool thing about Mustangs is that they're they're not so much a wild horse as much as they are like a free-roaming horse. Yeah, feral horses. Right, right, yeah. right. Now, the thing is, I also didn't know, you always hear these kind of, uh, these stories about, like, Elmer's glue, Todd made that reference yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, up until 1971, they were protected, which kind of brings us to the point of why we're here today, because you're part of the Extreme Mustang Mako. Now, exactly explain what happened. I mean, so far up to this point, you went down to, was it Kentucky or Le Tennessee? Lebanon, Tennessee. And you, and you went and you got your Mustang. Yep. And the whole purpose of this is, is now if I'm not mistaken, to kind of show where you take this horse and just kind of free roaming. Yeah, show the trainability of the Mustang. Right. And, uh, get 100, 120 days with them, and they're virtually untouched. And in that 120 days, you're going from a horse that may have never had hands on it, definitely never had a rider on it, and you're showing it, you know, in, in Lexington, Kentucky, right, the right, horse right. mecca of the East, right, uh, in front of thousands of people. So it's it's kind of a big deal. And what it does, it uh, it showcases these American legends, these living legends. Well, that was the, the whole. Well, that was yep. the whole purpose of the, of the thing. At one time, there were like with burros or horses, there were like two million of them out there in the West, for, right. for, for mostly in Nevada, I think. Right. But then they got they dwindled down to what twenty thousand, something like this. So they were kind of worried about at one point, yes, with all yeah. the the, uh, the Mustang runners and everything else that they were doing out there. Yeah, and now with all the advocates. It, it, we have the opposite problem. We have too many Mustangs. Right. Which is part of what happens right. now. They have to, the BLM since 71 has been kind of responsible for controlling the population. Now this is what's cool about the Extreme Mustang Makeover is that you go in there show. Show that these are valuable animals. And that you absolutely yep. can train them. Yeah. They're very loyal with that. I mean, you know, it, they are. It, it, so tell us what's going to happen today. So today we're going to get our hands, try to get our hands on these horses that uh, just came from Lebanon, Tennessee. They were shipped there from somewhere, uh, most of the horses were from Nevada. And then they were probably in a holding facility somewhere and then they took them to the holding facility in Tennessee. There was like 170 some horses there. Every people came from all over the country um, that entered this. There's only two events this year, it's in Kentucky and Texas. And there's people from, you know, from the West Coast, East Coast, up, you know, North, right. South, everywhere. And that was a great time. Well, okay, which leads me to another question then. Explain to me, how'd you get involved in all this? Uh, well, I start colts, which means the old terminology was you break a horse. Right. You think, you talk about breaking their wheel. We don't talk in those terms anymore. Now it's starting a horse. It's a more gentler process because we have more, we have a better education on their, you know, the psychology of a horse and we know how to bring them around and, and make everything a more gentler process, so we say starting. Right. But So I do that for the public. Uh, I've done it here in West Virginia for, for quite some time, and uh, there's no place to really showcase those talents except for something like this. You're taking an untouched horse, which was great about Mustangs, it's like a clean slate. You can program these horses because right. they haven't, a lot of them haven't had bad experiences with people, um, no abuse or anything like that. All they know is eat grass and Kind of like cattle, they get shoved from field to field, maybe put on a trailer, but they haven't had any hands-on experience. So that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you can put in good information and say, hey, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to be your partner, your riding partner. I'm here to, to, make, to make you a valuable commodity. Right, and not to mention, once you do this, that horse can go out for adoption and absolutely. then have a much, you know, it's going to show you can ride it like a quarter horse, say. Absolutely. Rather if, than staying in a pen, which is cheaper for the taxpayer at the same time. If these horses are untrained, they are highly dangerous, especially in the wrong hands. Right. So, 
to, to train these horses, you're, you're giving them life, basically, is what you're doing. Yeah. Where you say you, you, you're on the horse, you're the trainer, but they kind of have their, um, I mean, do they kind of, yeah, that's, like, like there's different horse. styles. There's different stuff. People get on in, in with these horses for the first time on foot. Um, I prefer to be on horseback because I'm getting older and I'm not as fast. I can't get out of the way. Right. And uh, my horse, you know, horses are herd animals, so they, they enjoy being in a herd. It makes them more relaxed. Right. So I like to be in the saddle on my horse to get in there and start rubbing on these horses. And I'm above them. So it's not much different riding a horse beside him or actually riding that horse, which hopefully we can get you on today if, sure. if we're lucky. Well, that's what I was kind of wondering is how that was yeah. all going to work out because it has to be a, a daunting task for you, you know, to just come in here and say, okay, horse, you don't know anything. My name's Mike. Let's let's rock this out in 100 days so I can find you a good hole more or less and I can show off my talents at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's really challenging and it, it takes a lot of time. You have to worry about the horse's fitness, uh, you know, mentally and physically. Um, you're you're judged on the the, the uh, body condition of your horse. You're judged on how he uh, how you handle him on the ground. You have to trailer load the horse, um, and then there's a set of maneuvers. And then the top ten out of these three preliminary things go to the top ten. And there's two events there, and the last event will be a freestyle. So you do something to music, and you can do use your imagination. Yeah, that's sure. I have. I last year in Kentucky I had this trailer. I drive up on top of my truck on the gooseneck, and I shot my pistols. On yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Man. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that didn't. That I mean, how many? But times? with you know the the climate today in America, <laughs> no more guns, and I'm really disappointed about yeah, that because that's, that's something I really like to do because. It shows the trust the horse has. Okay, a couple things. Once again, uh, Brightbill Farms, or the arena here is fantastic. I it mean, how did, how did you come here often? I was looking for a place because I was invited to the Texas thing, so I was going to have to train all winter, and my facility isn't quite what we have here. Yeah. I wanted somewhere good where I can get out of the weather and I uh, could train my horse. So I just ran into uh, Julie and Jean and uh, actually found them on Facebook and called them up and said, hey, I'm looking for a place to train my horse. And they were more than welcoming. They they really helped me out a ton. They're they're like family now. And I saw you know you can check them out on Facebook because I saw they do a lot of stuff on their own. Absolutely. And right. then you also do a lot of stuff. Yeah, my curse horsemanship. Yeah. 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 And you did. I mean, you could take people riding and you know all kinds of cool stuff like that. But then back to the Mustangs. If people want to know more information about that, uh, you can probably go to the BLM's website. I, I BLM.gov. Uh, Yep, or you could go to my site, uh, Microsourceship, ask me questions, I'll get you set yeah. up. Any, anybody, uh, if you have the proper facilities, you can adopt one of these living legends. But, you know, it's always better to have somebody break them in. Or, right, or right. I, don't, I recommend if you don't have any experience and you're really into this, find some help. There's plenty of trainers out there that live to train Mustangs because it's such, such a treat to yeah. watch this horse transform so quickly and to be a trusting part is amazing. It would be, and then to, to see how you can do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if I go in there, the thing's going to bite my face off. Or kick you. Whatever. Or kick you. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I just want to go up and touch that tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're talking to uh, Mike Hurst, and anything you want to know, once again, all the information was in there. Give us a BLM to go to check for the Mustangs. Check him out on Facebook and Bright Bill Farms. We're here at the, uh, the first touch, man. We're yeah. going to see what happens. And I, I got to put a shout out for, I'm sorry I didn't mention the Mustang Heritage Foundation also with the BLM put on this extreme Mustang event. Uh, Mustang. This is 11th Heritage year in a row, too, by the way, 11th year? I believe so. Which is nice about the foundation. What's nice about Mike's, in one section you have the foundation that raises money to, to keep the horses alive by feed. And then you have Mike who trains them along with a lot of other people around the country, then they get adopted out more easily. Absolutely. And then, uh, you know what? It's just fantastic, man. Mike, thanks for talking to us, brother. Hey, it's great to see you.